So let, 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 let's get started. Let, let's get started. Uh, okay. Tell me when you're ready. All right, we will. Dr. Walid, it's good to see you again. Walid, you're on mute. Sorry. Shukran, ya Dr. Nigad Wunadia. It's a pleasure to be with you all today. Shukran, Gazila. Mu bezn alay ba event nagi ha muwafak lina kullin. Inshallah. Taban, I haven't had the pleasure of meeting each and every one. I just sent uh, a quick uh, greeting to Walid because I've known Walid for how long now? 20, 30 years? Um, يعني, you're that young, you're I, that I, young. Boss, I, I stopped counting, okay? These are only numbers, my friend. <laughs> but I'm, I'm proud that we go a long way. Oh, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, inshallah daima. Inshallah daima. Alhamdulillah, ya Rab, ya Rab. Tab Nadja, can we get started? Or... Nadja. I know. Can we give it two minutes? Okay. Mute is a wonderful facility in, in, <laughs> in, in Zoom, but sometimes, uh, sometimes it's annoying as well. Yeah. I know that you have a meeting, and thank you so much for joining us in such a short uh, notice. But, no, no, it's, uh, you know, I'm, it's uh, it's always a pleasure. I am I am one of the people who registered for the healthcare week uh, because it's uh, it's particularly in my field and uh, uh, as we know this this is one of the sectors that is really uh, we won't use is dynamic and uh, is changing uh, metamorphosing if you will uh, and one of the drivers of this change is the digitalization that we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And we see this in many implementations uh, uh, in the various ventures that we're talking about. They are not implemented yet, but in each and every opportunity we review, uh, in their, there are, they are on various levels of strategic planning and uh, in each and every plan, we see an element of move to digitalization, implement implementation of database, of uh, big data-based systems, uh, etc. Yeah. So, uh, this is very, very encouraging. And uh, I think what I can share with you is uh, in, in almost every venture that we uh, look at in the beginning, there is a, a sense of the need for these implementations. It's not uh, a nice to have anymore. I think it is essential and it will impose on itself uh, the way we deal with healthcare and we roll out the provision to the various population, especially in the universal health insurance. I think it will benefit a great deal from these changes. Uh, I'm trying to fill in the time from my personal experience, and I'd like, I'm really, really uh, very anxious to hear from you. This is why I signed up to this, uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, so I think could we get started or shall yes, we? Dr. Niged, we can start. The floor is yours. Thank you. Finally. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, uh, this is, I think it's a more casualish way of, of starting the webinar, but let me kick it off by uh, welcoming all the ladies and gentlemen that are uh, attending with us today, and especially all our distinguished guests. Uh, I, uh, I, as I have said in the few moments, few moments preceding, to starting the webinar that uh, I'm very anxious 
to learn from all of you, especially that we are focusing and we 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 sort of have uh, I won't speak of mandates, but of uh, uh, definite uh, strong desire to be uh, a catalyst of change, uh, if you will, uh, in this direction. Uh, this is uh, the second of webinar organized by the British Egyptian Businessmen's Association. Uh, this is a tradition because uh, there are various sectors that we focused on uh, and we have sort of taken a decision that these sectors are very worthy of uh, more than one event. So we will make it a tradition to hold this uh, healthcare week uh, on, a, on, a, on an annual basis. And uh, this doesn't mean that if uh, an opportunity arises that we don't hold another one in the interim. Uh, this session, uh, as I said, is the second and probably the final uh, one of, of the, the, this healthcare week. Uh, and it will discuss how the new uh, health insurance uh, IT system will contribute to uh, digital health uh, system in Egypt, as well as the future of investment opportunities uh, in the Egyptian digitized healthcare sector. I, I would like, I'm, I'm really very delighted to welcome Dr. Hossam Sadiq the chairman of the Universal, the Universal Health Insurance Authority. Uh, we haven't met in person, maybe we did, forgive my memory, but uh, we, I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to meeting you very, very soon. And thank you very much for joining us. I also would like to welcome our expert panelists uh, and not in any order of priority, I'd like to welcome Dr. Ahmed Noor. Dr. Ahmed Noor is the director of, health, of the healthcare unit uh, of Vodafone uh, in Egypt. Uh, Dr. Wael Abdel Al, who is the co-founder of the Egyptian Telemedicine Foundation and medical director at Magdi Yaqub Global Heart Foundation uh, in New York, uh, United States of America. Uh, also our distinguished panelist, Muaz Hussam, the Chief Operating Officer of Rology, of Rology. I hope I got this right. And, and last, and but not at all, the very least, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Mohammed Hanafi, who is the Managing Director of Lynx uh, Strategic Business Advisors. Uh, I'm, I'm glad you're all with us today. Just give me a moment to uh, uh, thank our co-sponsors and sponsors for this continuous support, for their continuous support and their association. No, we, we are reliant on people that have close business relationships with us. The platinum, platinum sponsor for this event is the HSBC Bank of Egypt. The gold sponsors, uh, which is a somewhat lower tier, uh, the are Cleopatra Hospitals Group, uh, GSK Consumer Healthcare, and Vodafone. The event partners of Bank du Caire, the CIB Bank in Egypt, Polaris Parks, Qatar National Bank Al Ahli. And with these uh, sort of uh, due thanks to our partners, I'd like to hand the floor over to Mohammed Hanafi, who will do the, the, the moderation, and we will take us right through to the subject at hand. Thank you, Mohammed. I hand the floor to you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sharawi, uh, for the welcoming remarks. And we're grateful to you, to Mr. Khaled Nusir, uh, to Nadia Lamloum, and to the whole team at the British uh, Egyptian uh, Business Association for hosting this important uh, session on the digitalization of Egypt's healthcare system. Uh, since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic, and even before that, uh, I think Biba has been at the forefront uh, for awareness raising and advocacy efforts regarding the importance of maximizing benefit 
from Egypt's potential in the healthcare sector through a series of events, uh, publications, and webinars. And I think this is very admirable work. Uh, my name is Mohammed Hanafi, and I'm the Managed Director of Links uh, Strategic Business Advisors. And I'm honored to be here today among this distinguished uh, panel and guests. As you're aware, the Egyptian government has taken important steps on the path towards uh, driving uh, digitization across the health sector as it proceeds with the rollout of the Universal Health Insurance Scheme. These efforts are already having an impact uh, on the transformation of Egypt's healthcare sector. And I think they also provide a very good opportunity for an enhanced role for the private sector, as well as promising opportunities for public-private uh, uh, partnerships. Now today uh, we're joined and we're honored to be joined by a very fine gentleman uh, who is carrying on the shoulders uh, the uh, heavy burden of launching a very ambitious uh, universal health insurance scheme across all of Egypt and within a 10 year period. Dr. Hossam Saudi, the chairman of the Universal Health Insurance Authority. Dr. Saudi has kindly agreed to brief us on Egypt's healthcare uh, digitization strategy and how it's paving the way for the enhanced automation of hospitals and medical service providers and for enhanced public-private partnership model and for new opportunities for the medical providers in the implementation of the new uh, universal health insurance scheme, and also for increased dependency on remote uh, monitoring, telehealth platforms, and AI-enabled application services and devices, and of course, for opportunities for new investments to increase uh, accessibility of health for everyone. Now, after we hear from Dr. Sode, we will seek to build on his comments by taking a deeper dive uh, through a distinguished uh, panel of experts uh, at four main topics, basically. The first is uh, how the new health insurance IT system, which the government, Vodafone, and Vodafone's partners are currently developing, how it's going to basically contribute to a digital health ecosystem in Egypt. And for this, uh, we will be joined by Dr. Ahmed Nour, who is the director uh, of the digital health care uh, unit at Vodafone Egypt. Second of all, we will hear from our panel on the immediate and projected impact of Egypt's uh, health care digital transformation on medical uh, service providers, and what Egypt could do better and more to create an enabling environment for the automation and digitalization of hospitals and other medical uh, service providers. And on this, we're going to hear from Dr. Wer Abdelal, who is the co-founder of the Egyptian Telemedicine Foundation and the medical director at the Magdia Global Heart Foundation. Third, Dr. Walid Auf, the managed director of Bedmark Insurance Brokerage, is going to give us his perspective on the impact of Egypt's uh, healthcare digitalization strategy on health insurance operations in the country. Fourth, we're gonna get an interesting perspective on the current opportunities and challenges and challenges facing uh, existing AI enabled service providers in Egypt. And to shed light on this, we will be joined or, or we will hear from Mr. Moaz Hossam, the COO of Rolology, which is Egypt's foremost uh, teleradiology uh, company. Now, after we hear from our speakers, we will open the floor for what I'm hoping is going to be a very interactive discussion with members of Biba and our guests today. And for those of you who wish to direct questions to our speakers, please state your name, affiliation, and the question or comment on the Q&A uh, box uh, on the bottom of your screen. And I'll do my best to cover all the questions by the time we wrap up the discussion by 1.30 p.m. Cairo local time. Now, without further delay, uh, it gives me great pleasure to give the floor to Dr. Hossam Saudit, who is no stranger to Egypt's healthcare community, and brings more than 23 years of experience in the fields of insurance, information technology, and business development. He's a recognized world expert in leadership, strategic management, and organization reform. And he's one of the former leaders in the Allianz Insurance Group, and also held leadership positions at IT Works and Global Knowledge, which is formerly known as Synergy, which is one of the most influential companies worldwide in the field of training and technology. Dr. Sade, the floor is yours, sir. Uh, thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, I'm actually uh, honored and pleasure to be uh, among this, this uh, distinguished uh, uh, panel and uh, um, respectable people. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me for such important uh, event. Uh, let me first give you uh, a background about the strategy of the government related to healthcare uh, system in Egypt uh, uh, until 2030 which is the presidential uh, program that we are all following uh, during the coming 10 years. Uh, first of all, I would like to, uh, to make a, a small correction. I am the chief executive officer of the Universal, Universal Health Insurance Authority. The chairman is Dr. Mohammed Maid, the Minister of Finance uh, uh, of the government. Uh, uh, and I'm not uh, coming from a, med a medical background. Uh, 
I am actually an IT engineer, a software developer. Uh, I, uh, I spent almost uh, 17 years in the field of IT, um, and then another 12 years in the field of insurance with Allianz Group. Uh, the, the, the prototypes, or I can say the, the legacy that I found when I came to the UHIA that everyone was expecting that I'm coming from a medical background. So this was the first time in uh, the history of the government to uh, appoint uh, uh, an IT engineer, uh, uh, an insurance uh, expert uh, uh, to manage and lead the insurance, the health insurance system in Egypt. Uh, it was actually uh, a new, uh, uh, I see opinion that uh, uh, the government now is looking into the health insurance business the same way uh, that uh, um, uh, the insurance industry in the world looking uh, at it. Uh, definitely the, the recommendation uh, came from Dr. Mohammed Maid, uh, who is already an, an, an insurance background guy. He's an expert in, in actuaries. Uh, so I, I just wanted to give this background about uh, uh, why uh, achievement of universal health coverage services for each citizen with mentioning uh, the importance of targeting the most vulnerable population as a top priority. Uh, nowadays, we are facing an uh, epidemic that affects all the world, causing uncertainty in many fields, especially the health sector, since Egypt recorded its first uh, death case on March 17, 2020. And this is definitely a risk on a country healthcare system. Egypt vision 2030 that Egypt uh, in, in 2030 that Egypt would achieve a competitive, balanced, diversified and knowledge-based economy characterized by justice, social integration and participation with a balanced and diversified ecosystem benefiting from its strategic location and human capital to achieve sustainable development for a better life with all Egyptians in alignment with Egypt Vision 2030, it stated uh, that the country partnership framework has three focus areas that are linked to Egypt Vision 2030, which are improving governance, uh, private sector job creation, and social inclusion. Especially on social inclusion, the proposed project supports objective by increasing access to quality healthcare uh, services. Egypt Vision 2030 adopted the concept uh, that all Egyptians enjoy a healthy, safe, and secure life through an integrated, accessible, high quality, and, univers uh, uh, and universal healthcare system capable of improving health conditions through early intervention and preventive coverage, ensuring protection for the vulnerable, and achieving satisfaction of citizens and health sector employees. This will lead to prosperity, welfare, happiness, as well as social and economic development, which will qualify Egypt to become a leader in the field of healthcare services and research in Arab world and Africa. Accordingly, the development of an integrated strategic plan for the digital transformation of the universal health insurance system in Egypt that helped achieve Egypt Vision 2030 and the Sustainable Development Goals. Our mission uh, uh, is to transform existing health services into a modern, high-performing quality health system that is patient-centered, accessible, equitable, efficient, and innovative improve, uh, to improve quality of life and well-being of the population through the prevention of communicable and non-communicable uh, diseases, promote healthy lifestyles, and an environment conductive to health. Our vision, a healthy nation with a constantly improving quality of life with the competent local agencies and in improving the health of individuals and the environment, early detection and developing a raising treatment and rehabilitation services. 
Our objective is to increase the coverage of Egypt's universal health insurance system in phase one governance at the beginning, strengthening universal health insurance system related to governance and institutions and provide temporary finance protection against high out-of-pocket health expenditures for vulnerable populations outside phase uh, uh, one of the governments. Uh, thank you very much. This was an introduction of uh, uh, what is our strategy uh, for the healthcare system in Egypt. Um, uh, I would like to add over this that uh, definitely the digital uh, and digital transformation uh, and the era of the internet, the technology now a day is available uh, at hand. It's now cheaper than it was 20 years ago and 30 years ago. So we have to, uh, to capitalize on this. Currently, uh, this is the biggest uh, health insurance policy in the world. We have one benefit package covering 100 million uh, citizens uh, under one umbrella. Uh, the financial sustainability here is a big uh, issue that we need how we will be able to, uh, to, uh, to sustain such system uh, through, uh, I can say, uh, uh, an economy that uh, a worldwide economy that is slowing down, down currently due to pandemic uh, and uh, the, the development that uh, the Egyptian uh, government is uh, working on uh, during the, the coming 10 years, uh, changing the culture uh, and uh, uh, changing actually the culture of the healthcare system in Egypt and the providers who are providing um, uh, health care that is somehow, I can say, uh, not uh, properly regulated and not properly monitored. Um, uh, the challenges of uh, um, um, the misuse of, of the service, the, uh, uh, how we can manage the, uh, uh, the fraud in the future uh, through uh, an, a very big country like Egypt and the very high level uh, of uh, insured uh, population. In this case, I can say that uh, without having uh, a solid uh, digital platform that can help uh, all the pillar, uh, all the, the, the partners uh, that are working in, in such system, uh, and this, uh, this system should be, uh, like I said in my introduction, uh, a patient-centered uh, system that is looking to the citizen uh, uh, from his uh, or her point of view, not from the system point of view, uh, how we are going to be able to communicate and integrate together, how we are going to be able to get benefit from the data that we are collecting uh, when we are curing people or giving a service or collecting a premium. Uh, all these, uh, these pillars are very important. And to achieve all these objectives, I believe, uh, without having a solid and an integrated uh, digital systems, not only for healthcare, but for financial management, for uh, patient management, for uh, beneficiary management, uh, uh, for collection management, uh, financial system, uh, risk management systems, fraud detection systems, all these should be integrated together and should have a solid and uh, system that can help uh, so, um, uh, this system to continue and to be sustained and to continue giving the same uh, level of services that uh, the Egyptians are looking for in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Mohammed, uh, for, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, I'm very open to any kind of questions that uh, my colleagues here or uh, uh, our participants want to ask. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Hussein. Uh, uh, it for your uh, very interesting uh, remarks. And I think I believe I speak on behalf of many of us here in thanking you for your service to the country and also for carrying the burden of planning and implementing this very ambitious project, which is undoubtedly going to affect, I think, the lives of every single Egyptian. I think your message was very clear that uh, the train for Egypt's uh, healthcare uh, uh, digitalization process is moving forward and that the time is right for the private sector to maximize benefit from the realm of new technologies and also uh, from the seriousness of partners within the government to make real change in Egypt's healthcare and health insurance uh, sector. Once again, if you have questions or comments for Dr. Hussein, please state them in the Q&A box and I'll direct them to him in the course of discussion after we hear from our panelists. 
Now I'd like to turn to our panel and our first speaker today is Dr. Ahmed Noor, who is the Director of Digital Healthcare at Vodafone Egypt. Dr. Noor is one of the top digital healthcare and insurance leaders in Egypt and the Middle East with over 26 years of experience in the healthcare sector, including in startup greenfields in local and multinational organizations. There he has held positions of managing director for Al Ahli Medical Company and the country manager for Mednet and Munich Re in Egypt. In his current position as Vodafone, he leads the company's uh, efforts in supporting Egypt's uh, digital healthcare strategy, in addition to identifying new business opportunities for Vodafone Egypt and the healthcare sector. Dr. Noor, we very much look forward to learning more about how the new health uh, insurance IT system is going to contribute to a digital health ecosystem in Egypt. And to allow us enough time for, for an interactive Q&A session, I'll be very grateful if you could kindly limit uh, your remarks to five minutes. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, and uh, I would like also to thank uh, Engineer Hossam uh, for the very nice uh, update that he gave to all of us. And maybe because we are working closely with the, the UCIA and uh, Engineer Hossam and his team, uh, it's very clear that it's a, a big challenge uh, that the UHIA and the Egyptian government is going through. And actually, Vodafone is also uh, taking this challenge uh, on their shoulders in order to achieve uh, the vision of uh, Egypt, uh, uh, vision or strategy in 2030. Uh, one of the strategies uh, of Vodafone is the digital and digitalization. And there is digital healthcare now in Vodafone that is building and supporting the healthcare ecosystem for the universal system. This universal uh, system actually starts from the medical provider side uh, till the control or the accreditation and the management of the Gahar side, including definitely the core part, which is the UHIA being the funding and the operating arm of the country for this uh, part. Uh, Vodafone is building a, a full uh, ecosystem, um, starting by and focusing on the digital journey of the patient, uh, how to render a service, how to build an electronic medical record for a patient, and um, how this can be uh, supporting the government and all the, I would say, the underwriting of the actuarial regulation for the most important part in the insurance related part, which is the sustainability and how you can control and manage your uh, data lakes and your um, uh, health economics so that you understand uh, from uh, reporting structure what you can uh, have uh, across the country from a disease uh, management. Uh, all the health economics actually criteria and accordingly you can uh, work on uh, your uh, health strategies from a standpoint of view and the financial strategy from the other point of view. Uh, this is not uh, only limited uh, to a patient journey but actually it's also related to the treating physician and the medical provider journey because they are the, one of the major stakeholders in uh, contributing to the vision of the Vodafone and definitely the Egyptian government of 2030. Um, physicians are the major stakeholder uh, in this uh, ecosystem and uh, adoption for them to the new technologies, especially for the new generation that are digital native uh, would be definitely much easier, but we are now in the uh, transition phase, I would say. So uh, giving them the right journey approach and giving them the right uh, tools is very important. In the meantime, um, Egypt and the UHIA and uh, the General Healthcare Authority are standardizing the codes used uh, in Egypt in terms of the medical terminologies like the ICDs, the ICHI coding system, for example, by the WHO. So using coding system, whatever it is, is extremely important so that we have a standardized approach across the country that is also internationally uh, recognized. Vodafone is extremely focusing on uh, this part and also trying to develop uh, 
the impact of this on the private sector from an insurance and medical provider uh, arms and the insurance arms too and brokers are because this um, is the, the contribution and the partnership between public and private uh, business part. Uh, I, I, I believe I briefed uh, the situation of Vodafone with the universal part of the Egypt uh, look. I wish uh, I did five times, uh, five minutes time allocated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed Nour, for your remarks and for sticking to the time. And as always, uh, Vodafone continues to play uh, or take a leading role in supporting uh, Egypt's uh, digital transformation and sustainable development priorities. Um, our next speaker is Dr. Wael Abdelal, the co-founder of the Egyptian uh, Telemedicine Foundation and the medical director at Magdi Aoub uh, Global Heart Foundation. Dr. Abdelal is one of Egypt's well-known experts in the field of pediatric cardiology. He's a founding member and was the medical director of the Aswan Heart Center at the Magdi Aoub Foundation from 2009 to, and to, to 2019. And as of August 2019, he moved to the United States to serve as the medical director of the Magdi Aoub Global Heart Foundation. He graduated from Cairo University's Medical School uh, of Medicine, and sorry, Cairo University School of Medicine, and later participated in international fellowships at Boston uh, Children's Hospital at Harvard University the Cleveland Clinic, and also at the Harefield Hospital UK. Uh, Dr. Abdelaz's involvement in charity healthcare programs also exposed him to the deficiencies in healthcare provision, particularly in remote and underserved communities. Uh, his work also led him to involvement in telehealth. And in 2016, he co-founded and became president of the Egyptian Telemedicine Foundation, which is now spearheading many successful telemedicine outreach programs across Egypt and Africa. Dr. Abdelad, the floor is yours for five minutes to share your thoughts on the impact of Egypt's healthcare digital transformation on medical service providers and how Egypt can create an enhanced enabling environment for the automation and digitalization of medical service providers. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you very much and uh, esteemed panel. And it's, it's good to put uh, faces and sounds to uh, email and names. So a privilege to be here with you and uh, I'll first start by congratulating the, congratulating the uh, Egyptian uh, government, whichever entity, for two smart decisions. One, which really impacting around the world, I can tell you from the US, which is the Hep C program, uh, eradicating hepatitis C in Egypt, which was a very, very uh, beautiful and well scripted and uh, uh, processed uh, program. And it's uh, resonating around the world. The second is taking this challenge of uh, universal health care because every patient has the right to get uh, good health care. Uh, they are big challenges, but they are the future. My second comment is that uh, COVID uh, showed us the strategic importance of health care. Even uh, big, big countries with deep pockets got caught with their pants down. And it is an important part of the economy uh, exactly now matching or balancing with the economy. So healthcare and economics are in now in the balance. And this is going to continue uh, because part of the digital transformation actually led to the very fast development of these vaccines with uh, bio, biotechnology, biogenetics uh, on the forefront of medicine now. So medicine is going to be changed forever. Uh, with the CRISPR coming in and gene editing. Now it's a reality. We see this, these new vaccines with gene editing uh, very fast moving. And this is part of digital. This is part of AI. This is part of simulation. This is part of all of that. I got to see how simulation works in the US. Uh, I, I live in New York, in Manhattan, and I uh, volunteered with Governor Cuomo and the health uh, community there. And I learned a lot from that. Uh, so these are just fresh in my mind. Uh, I am, early as in 2005, I started working with telehealth. Uh, I had this vision and uh, it was an uphill uh, situation. And, uh, but I worked with different partners in, um, in Egypt and we have hundreds of sites now uh, in Egypt, both with the Ministry of Telecommunication and with the Ministry of Health and with the private sector. And the whole thing is healthcare is about two main things, access and quality care. 
If you have those two parts, then you achieve trust of both provider and uh, the patient. And digital health provides you with fantastic access. Uh, quality, this is something else, and I'm not going to go into that. But the digital part of healthcare is extremely important, uh, as I've said, in the COVID era. And the COVID really pushed everyone to telemedicine and uh, at least around the world. So one part that really, and, and, and as we have been discussing, telemedicine, uh, digital health is about informational health, the back end, the EMR, electronic medical records, and all of that. It's about providing actually healthcare through telemedicine and new wearable devices and all of that. Uh, for instance, diabetes, or uh, now most people in the US are wearing a wearable that gives you real time 24 hour uh, uh, situation of your blood, how high is your blood sugar and all of that. And people are going by the apps and they're eating this and this and get alerts. So and this is very important. So wearables are into it. Uh, very much and patents and all of this is important. We will have a talk about radiology after that. Teleradiology is high up in the screen from the time of night hawks, like 20 years ago. They are, they are, so it's, it's a very successful project. Uh, uh, one important experience we had during our journey and is still an Achilles heel of telehealth in general and healthcare is the quality of internet service in Egypt. This has been appalling at the least for the past 20 years, and it has been stopping us continuing and progressing. And if there's no solution for this, whatever think tanks we have, whatever programs we have, this is an extremely limiting factor. We have a whole ministry called Ministry of Telecommunication, three big giants in the telecom industry, Please give us the roadway, give us the pathways, give us the internet that can actually carry uh, uh, healthcare and digital healthcare. Without that, we are in trouble, whatever we want to do. This needs to be fixed. I'm sorry, I'm being very frank uh, about that. The potential is extreme, is fantastic. And I think the government is doing a fantastic job probing all these new frontiers. And uh, there will be mistakes, there will be drawbacks, but at least they're moving in the right direction. And uh, I think, I've, I don't know if I exceeded my five minutes, but if anybody has any questions, we have an experience of more than 20 years on the ground uh, about uh, setting up with our own softwares patented in Egypt at the smart village uh, and connecting Egypt villages, remote areas, cross-border telemedicine in the Nile Basin and beyond. And we can, we can tell you a lot about uh, our journey. And uh, uh, one other thing, other than the internet, is the pace of move. We need to move fast. The world is moving very fast. Uh, and uh, this CRISPR and genetics and all these new things are extremely, extremely moving very fast. And we, we, we need to catch up uh, much faster. So. We're willing to help whichever way, and I, I hope I didn't take much more of your time, and uh, I'm, I'm willing to take any more questions. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed, and thank you very much for to this uh, enlightening uh, and congratulations on all the frontier meetings for the Egyptian government and universal healthcare. Thank you, Dr. Abdelal, for your uh, very clear and concise uh, remark. Um, okay, I think someone has his speaker on the podium. Um, our next speaker is uh, Mr. Warid Aouf, who is currently the uh, Vice Chairman uh, and the Managing Director of Medmark Insurance Brokerage. Dr. Walid, can you can you put your 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 uh, your, your your microphone on mute for one second because I think there's a uh, maybe it's not Dr. Walid. Yes. Um, yes, sorry. I can uh, hear you. Great, uh, Dr. Walid. Mr. Walid Aouf is currently the vice chairman and managing director of Benmark Insurance Brokerage, and also the board member at Miss Service Administration and Consultants Company, and he's also the chairman of the International Company of Telemedicine Services and a member of the Federation of Mediterranean Insurance Appropriation. 
Uh, he graduated from Kyrie University's medical school in 1983 and, has a, and had a very short uh, medical practice career until 1987 when he shifted to the fields of medical assistance, uh, medical evacuation, and private medical insurance services. Uh, he acquired over 30 years of experience in the health insurance domain and has become the managing director of one of the leading firms in the industry. Mr. Rolf, we very much look forward to hearing your thoughts on the impact of the healthcare digitalization plans on expanding Egypt's health insurance sector. The floor is yours for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mohammed B, and thanks to uh, actually the British Egyptian Business Association for arranging this important event. Uh, and thank you, I'm privileged to be within the panel. And of course, I also would like to thank all our guests. Uh, I will go straight to the point uh, for the best interest of time for everyone. Actually, the first point that I had in mind to address was actually already addressed by uh, my colleague, Dr. Wael Abdelal, which is actually on the um, telecommunication and internet infrastructure in Egypt. Uh, I will not repeat what he has said, but I think that this is one of the elements where we have seen in the last years, of course, important uh, developments and progress in Egypt. But I still second what he said, that we need uh, also to work more on improving this infrastructure. Uh, having said so, uh, I would like to focus a little bit on the impact of the digitization uh, strategy that the government is adopting on healthcare on the insurance sector and of course on the insurance sector we need to look at the national insurance united the universal health insurance uh, project the, the national one and that of course Osambi Sade has you know, addressed and covered and we have on the other side the private medical insurance entities and this is maybe the area where I do have more experience having been working with the uh, local uh, and the international providers of medical insurance operating in Egypt for, I would say, almost 30 years. The impacts are actually uh, quite significant, quite diverse, and quite promising. Uh, and one of the most significant impacts, I believe, is that uh, in terms of the provision of the healthcare services in Egypt, we know that we have very significant gaps and our gaps are both quantitative gaps uh, in terms of the number of uh, medical facilities, whether they are hospitals, polyclinics, primary care centers, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the number of the medical service providers and certain specialties, qualifications and so on. And that is all quantitative. And then we have a qualitative gap with regards to the uh, quality of the healthcare service that is being provided at the national scale. Of course, there are excellent initiatives that are happening in terms of trying to bridge these gaps. Uh, and the traditional initiatives to bridge these gaps are of course by building more medical facilities uh, at all levels, uh, by developing and training uh, medical uh, personnel. This is all quite good, however, uh, what I can describe as more than a bridge and what I would describe as sort of a flyover is the actual digitization of healthcare. Because digitization of healthcare can actually achieve a lot at a relatively small cost and in a way that can be extremely fast. And that will have an impact on the provision of the healthcare service and subsequently, of course, on the private medical insurance industry, as well as the national uh, health insurance uh, platforms. And that is going to be, of course, quite important with regards to the operational aspects, the quality of the service, uh, the control of the costs, and in insurance, whether the insurer is the government or a private insurance company, local or multinational, one of the most important pillars is always about cost containment. In the medical insurance field, our real objective is to offer to the insured person uh, the best, the optimum quality of service at a reasonable and well-contained cost. 
And definitely here, digitization of healthcare is one of the important tools to contain the costs and to have a better financial uh, model. Uh, it has, of course, the strong advantage of reducing the turnaround times. And it is not only the turnaround time in getting the medical service, but in getting the medical service, in having the medical service invoiced from a provider to an insurer, in getting actually that invoice paid in a timely manner and efficient way. So we're looking at the entire cycle with all the medical, the financial, the various work processes. And here, of course, digitization makes that far more efficient. And naturally, with digitization in any kind of process would usually come in parallel the um, governance, the institutional governance of the uh, operation in the uh, healthcare sector. And this is one of the areas that I think we need to take more steps in Egypt in terms of implementing corporate governance in the healthcare uh, sector in general, whether the medical service providers, whether the um, third party administrators or the uh, private uh, or national health insurance. And of course, I know all parties are already aware of that. Uh, definitely, uh, there is an important element that we are seeing, especially that I would like to highlight that uh, in the private insurance sector, we are expecting to have a new law to be issued in the next couple of months, okay? Uh, and that new law will, for the first time, uh, open the door for establishment of specialized private insurance schemes. These are going to be insurance that only specialized medical insurance. And I think that along with the strategy that the government is adopting in terms of um, the Universal Health Act, in terms of uh, implementing digitization in the healthcare services and the insurance sector, Uh, I think we've lost uh, Dr. Walid. Um, can you hear us, Dr. Walid? Very sorry. Uh, I am back with you. Uh, what? Take your time. Take your time. Uh, Okay, uh, sorry, I got disconnected. Uh, again, it's a, it's a Wi-Fi infrastructure issue. I apologize for that. Uh, but the last point I was trying to say that you may have not heard was about the fact that the new private insurance law, okay, is going to open the door for the establishment of specialized medical insurance entities. Uh, and I think that these entities will contribute significantly actually in uh, supporting the various uh, medical insurance activities in Egypt at all scales. Uh, I don't want to take more time. I thank you all very much and uh, I hope to have covered uh, the points as briefly as I could. Thank you very much, Hamad. Uh, thank you, sir, for your very uh, interesting precise comments. I think we all agree with you on the importance of the expanded joint work the private sector to develop uh, Egypt's insurance market. As you're aware, of course, you know, Egypt has a large population in the region. It means a very promising market for us. Most recently, the public and private health insurance companies have shown uh, you know, strong uh, growth driven by the public expenditure on capital projects and increasing private sector activity. However, the insurance sector's impact, I think, on ordinary Egyptians has been very limited with a very sm small percentage of the population or corporate sector covered. So I think, therefore, you know, Egypt's low insurance penetration rates uh, highlight the considered potential for further expansion. 
taken into consideration that the scope uh, for growth for the health insurance market is really endless here in Egypt. Um, last but not least, uh, in terms of our panel uh, speakers, I'm pleased to give the floor to uh, Mr. Moaz Hussein, who is the Chief Operating Officer of Urology, which is a very promising Egypt-based uh, on-demand teleradiology platform that helps medical providers in solving the, you know, the recurring dilemma of high latency of reporting time by matching their cases with the optimum radiologist and in a remote fashion. Uh, Rology was founded in 2017 and gained the credibility of its partners in government and the private sectors, and currently supports over 110 hospitals and medical institutions across Egypt, Kenya, uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, and I believe the Democratic Republic of Congo. Moaz is originally a computer programmer, and he previously served as the co-founder of Okani and former business developer of Cleopatra Imports. He's a graduate of the Business Administration and Management School of Alexandria University, and now the co-founder of Rology. He's gonna share with us today his very practical and underground experience on the current opportunities and challenges facing existing uh, AI-enabled service providers in Egypt. Moaz, the floor is yours for five minutes, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Mohammed, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you, of course, Dr. Hussein and all the panelists and the British Egyptian Business Association for uh, this wonderful webinar. Uh, so if it's okay with you, Mr. Muhammad, I am going to start with the challenges and I'm going to end on an optimistic note with opportunities. Uh, so when it comes to AI and healthcare, we have three main challenges here in Egypt. The first challenge would be the awareness and the trust uh, of the healthcare uh, ecosystem. Uh, doctors and nurses in general are historically not early adopters of technology for good reasons, of course, and it takes a long time to gain their trust in new technology and get them to use uh, technology. I think until very recently, uh, it was still a challenge to get uh, doctors to write a comprehensive uh, medical records in an electronic fashion. So switching them up to AI solutions will definitely be a challenge and it takes a lot of time uh, for training and getting the trust. The second problem is the problem of data. And this is not a problem that Egypt facing alone. This is one of the problems facing the AI industry everywhere, and it's data. And in Egypt, we are a nation of more than 100 million people now. So definitely there is no shortage of data, but the problem is data is fragmented and siloed in so many different places that extracting or unlocking value from it becomes a real challenge. But uh, hopefully as we are digitalizing our healthcare and uh, ecosystem, as more hospitals are relying more and more on uh, hospital information system and uh, we will have a much easier way of collecting all of this data and regulating access to it in a safe and effective way. The last problem, which is a big problem actually, is there is no currently a legal framework that governs how AI in healthcare should be licensed, should be limited, and should be uh, distributed uh, in Egypt. Uh, so in essence, there is no clear best to market for any uh, AI developer on how to license their technology, how to limit their technology, what is essentially allowed or not uh, allowed to, for uh, AI uh, solutions uh, in, uh, to go to the market. So these are the three challenges. Uh, they are not a very big challenges in my opinion. They are definitely solvable challenges with uh, coordination and with work. And that would take us to an opportunities and opportunities are definitely uh, blendful. So if we look at the opportunity for AI in Egypt specifically and in a way in general, we would find that the main problem is there is just, there is not enough doctors around. And to solve this problem, what we have two passes. First is to add more doctors to our ecosystem. And the second is to increase the productivity of the current workforce of doctors and nurses and so on. And unless there is some scientific fiction like advancement in human cloning technology, just adding more doctors is not a quick and easy fix. So we're gonna have to switch to finding a way to increase the productivity of doctors who are working on our healthcare uh, system. And we can do this through AI, which can, one of the main areas of AI can help in healthcare, of course, is in aiding in clinical decision-making. And I'm very careful about using the word aid, not replace, because this is definitely not something I see happening for many, many decades where a doctor of any kind will be replaced by a, an AI solution. No, but we should rely on in, in artificial intelligence to aid doctors and nurses in uh, their clinical decisions. And the second uh, problem, and which will also touch on two points that was mentioned by the panelists before me, is in the future, we will be seeing a shift from 
on hospital care, uh, hospital-based care to a home-based care in many, many areas. Uh, right now, we already see in this first wave was wearable, like Dr. Wael was mentioning, was wearable, like almost many of us already wearing this wearables who are recording our blood pressure, recording blood uh, oxygen and level in our blood. It's recording stress and, and heart rate and so many more things. And we can see uh, technology companies pushing more and more for the adoption of wearables. And this is because using AI with all this data that being gathered by our wearables and sensors, we can use AI to help people uh, take more control of their healthcare, uh, give them indication if they are suffering from anything, when do they need to go to a hospital, when do they need to start taking extra care of their health, exercise or calm down or any other things. And combining those sensors with alerts that would be triggered on the clinical side, on the physician side, that would give him an indication if one of his patients is in risk, if one of his patients is in need of immediate care, we can switch some of the hospital-based uh, care to the home-based care and help alleviate the problem of the shortage of the hospital uh, infrastructure itself, whether it's clinic or hospital buildings. And the second point we will see uh, from the switch from 100% hospital care to a partial hospital, partial home-based care is people with chronic disease care who will be uh, relying more and more on applications, on sensors, on wearables to help them regulate their health, to help them uh, adjust the dosage of their uh, medication, to help keep their physicians updated with all uh, their health care, uh, almost in a real uh, lifetime uh, update. So these two points are definitely will be uh, one of the main opportunities we will see when it comes uh, to AI. AI is definitely the future, but uh, we should be aware to not hype it too much. It's still a new technology. It has shown great, great promise, but we are far away from relying on it completely or using it as an old fix for everything, but we should definitely have a strategy on how to implement it and how to use it and how to use the fact that Egypt as a nation just generates huge, huge amounts of data that should be an asset uh, for us moving forward in the public sector and in the private sector. Uh, thank you. I hope I didn't go over this time. I look forward to any questions. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moaz. And I really want to thank all the panelists, and speakers uh, for really sticking uh, to, to the specific time that we suggested. And we finished exactly the time we wanted to finish, which is 1 p.m. to give enough time for an interactive discussion. Um, I see a number of questions uh, in the uh, in the Q&A box, and I encourage everyone, please, to state your affiliation name and also the question and exactly who you want to direct it to as well. Um, I just want to start with by picking up on uh, two points that uh, uh, common points that uh, Mr. Moaz and, uh, and Mr. Walid Of actually made with regard to legislation. Um, in terms of, you know, uh, Moaz was saying about the lack of AI legislation uh, or legislation regulating AI activities. And also Mr. Walid, you know, pointed us to the evolving uh, insurance, uh, pri uh, private insurance law in the, which is going to be discussed in, in Parliament. And, and, and I want to talk to Dr. Hussam Saleh about this in terms of, you know, again, you laid out a very clear vision in terms of the way forward for Egypt's uh, transformation strategy for the healthcare sector. And I think you provided some food for thought for everyone here today to consider thoroughly. But I think to help everyone prepare for the next phase, I think we need to be clear also in terms of what work needs to be done, you know, on the legislative side to create a better investment climate for a more digitized healthcare sector. So I'll be grateful. And, and if you could share with us your thoughts on what is or should be in the pipeline in terms of legislative priorities to enable you know, your partners in the private sector to support the efforts and the vision that you put forward uh, together, uh, that you put forward today. And of course, you know, if members of the panel also have thoughts and suggestions on this issue, please uh, feel free to share them with us after Dr. Hussain uh, responds. Hey, thank you very much, Mohammed. Definitely, uh, there is a huge opportunity for the private sector in terms of uh, uh, medical service providing, uh, as we all know, based on the statistics, uh, that uh, currently uh, the, uh, is, is quite uh, potential. Uh, the need is much, much higher than the demand that we have, especially on uh, if we look into the geographical distribution of this, uh, the uh, medical services uh, in Egypt. As you know, uh, that uh, most of the providers, especially on the private sector, are concentrated in the big cities like Cairo, Alexandria, um, uh, uh, and most of the country is lack of uh, 
uh, of uh, lots of, uh, of medical services, especially on the upper Egypt and uh, uh, on the Sinai level and some of the Delta areas, they don't have, uh, they are not covered with either, with even essential medical services that they need. Uh, definitely the country is working uh, on this with the new uh, authority, which is uh, currently the uh, General Authority for Healthcare, which is uh, taking over all the uh, medical service facilities uh, that were uh, owned by the, the government uh, and owned by the Ministry of Health. And they are uh, currently uh, rebuilding and re, uh, uh, renovating them or building new premises all over Egypt. However, uh, they cannot do it uh, alone. A lot of, uh, of opportunities available uh, to, to either uh, partner with them or to uh, to give the private sector the opportunity to expand and see exactly what kind of services that we need all over uh, Egypt, not only in Cairo and Alexandria. Uh, on the other hand, if you are talking about the uh, technology itself, telemedicine is definitely a potential uh, for for whomever wants to work in this kind of industry, uh, especially uh, rural areas that you know that some specialities we cannot even cover it after uh, we have uh, the general authority, authority of healthcare, and even uh, the, the private insurance, uh, uh, the private uh, medical uh, providers in the, in the future, they will not be able to cover such areas. Uh, so I see that med uh, telemedicine is a very uh, good potential for whoever wants to invest in it, especially it's the new technology. Uh, especially um, the one challenge that the telemedicine is currently. Uh, facing is that's not regulated yet in Egypt. So, and we are trying to push on the Ministry of Health and uh, uh, on the uh, Ministry of Justice as well uh, to start putting some regulations for uh, for telemedicine, especially that we are still did not approve uh, such services and we are not paying claims for it. Uh, so, uh, I th I see uh, a, be a very good opportunity in this um, for insurance. Uh, uh, companies as well and uh, third party administrators who are uh, servicing and contracting the medical providers, they definitely have uh, opportunities with the uh, Universal Health Insurance Authority because uh, on the claims processing level and on the financial management uh, processing level, definitely will not be able to have the capacity to manage uh, claims for 120 million uh, Egyptians in, in 10 years from now. So definitely they can tie up, they can uh, partner with the, the, uh, the health insurance authority to have their own uh, role in, uh, in the future for insurance uh, organizations as well. Um, uh, in the future, they can uh, they definitely can uh, uh, can provide the complementary supplementary uh, um, uh, uh, coverage uh, for uh, for the citizens that were not uh, covered uh, uh, in the past, as well as segments that. Uh, uh, most of the, the insurance uh, sector did not uh, tackle or even put it in their uh, radar of, uh, uh, in terms of opportunities. Now, uh, all Egyptians will be insured. Uh, so the, the, the awareness uh, towards the health insurance itself will, will, will increase in the future, which will create new opportunities for insurance uh, organizations. Uh, last but not least, for technology uh, in healthcare, uh, this, is, this is actually the name of the game. Uh, in the future, for us uh, uh, as a financial uh, uh, institute, uh, taking care of the, the financial sustainability of the system, uh, like I said at the beginning, without having technology involved uh, from end-to-end -end experience of the of the of the patient, uh, from the check-in to check-out, uh, for me to be able to track and to avoid fraud and to avoid misuse and to avoid all these things will be a very big uh, hassle in the future. Uh, uh, so for us, it's crucial and a very good opportunity for, for technology uh, people and technology and, uh, providers to start working on, uh, uh, on, the, on the potential because in the future, we are not going to contract with any uh, uh, medical provider who does not have an automated system, an end-to-end -end automated system uh, that at the end who uh, uh, provide an invoice that I can track it to, uh, without an interference of people. So uh, this is another opportunity uh, in technology for healthcare providers. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, um, Mr. Hossein. Uh, does anyone from the panel want to, to, to add anything or should I move to the next question? Can I add something? Yeah, I just want to add my voice to the... I'm not sure is my connection good or can you hear me? Go ahead, please. Yeah, I think that regulation is very important, not only in the digital part, but uh, for instance, one simple thing is that a patient can go directly to a pharmacist and gets prescribed a medication. So regulation has to be all around, not only on the digital front, but this is also part of the very important uh, part of the healthcare regulation that you, and I think we're moving towards that, listening to Mr. Hussam or Dr. Hussam in the, in the business part. So uh, I think it needs to be an all round uh, regulation so that we can, uh, all parties can benefit. Thank you, Dr. Weir. Um, let me go to uh, another, another question. Um, and this question is posed by um, Omnia Rafat, who is a digital marketing specialist in uh, Dileni Tech, AI for medical Im imaging solutions. And she's asking why there are not investments uh, in real scientific-based health tech uh, startups and that all investments are focusing on services. Um, without putting anyone on the spot, um, I, you know, I think uh, Moaz maybe will be uh, best equipped to answer this question, given your experience in the, in the sector. Uh, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, well, I think investment right now, at least investments coming from the private sector, will be definitely focused more towards uh, companies or startups or initiatives who are going to be generating economic value, economic money. Uh, Research historically is have been funded by governments or by large corporations who are investing with an end in mind, but just uh, scientific research without a clear path of how to go to a market and how to generate uh, any economic value or any money from it. I don't think, in my opinion, is something that we would see unless it's coming from the government. And I, I already know the government in Egypt here has a lot of initiatives and a lot of support, and they are adding and expanding more and more on how to uh, fund uh, scientific research. But again, if you have a scientific research, please make sure it's have a clear economic value. Otherwise you will not be able to attract private investment for private money. I think that's my point. Excellent, thank you very much. Um, let me ask a question uh, directed, I think for Dr. Ahmed Nuh. Uh, from Marola Kabbani, who is a senior consultant at Lynx and also uh, a professor at New Giza University. And she's asking if you can, you know, you mentioned you know, you know, the, the details of the new health insurance IT system, um, but she's asking to identify, you know, what main hurdles and bottlenecks that you're currently facing for this project. Um, I would believe uh, the main hurdles or bottlenecks as she's mentioning uh, are different aspects. Uh, every this is uh, one of the most uh, complex uh, projects uh, Vodafone is passing through, and I believe also um, the, the the healthcare sector in Egypt is passing through across the history because it involves all the stakeholders. Um, so uh, working on with different stakeholders inside such huge project is definitely. Um, uh, not an easy task. We are working under the supervision of uh, different uh, stakeholders and entities inside uh, the government. And we need to fulfill definitely the requirements being the client and we can see their vision and the requirements, which is, um, which is very ambitious actually, and make a lot of sense. And in the meantime, we are managing at the back um, a lot of vendors. Uh, so we need to reach an integrated vision uh, that makes sense on the long term, not only on the short term. So you are looking always for quick wins and in the meantime, maintaining the sustainable, uh, scalable output uh, that you can scale it and tune it and fix it 
the way you see on the long term. The third part, which is the adoption uh, for the doctors, nurses, paramedics, admins, uh, because the, this part is also, uh, you are asking an admin person working in rural area to use technology. Uh, I believe we succeeded in the first uh, city we lost in. Now uh, we have a full paperless uh, operation uh, in a city like Bursaid. You can go to a primary care unit to find a full paperless operation. But uh, this took us uh, seriously more than one and a half year uh, to reach to this point of training and adoption. Uh, but I believe that the Egyptian government uh, is giving the full power and full support uh, to reach this objective. It's part of the digital Egypt. And uh, Vodafone is sparing no effort uh, to achieve this uh, by all directions and all means. It's a very part of the heart of the, of the Vodafone uh, Egypt and group, how we achieve this uh, with the Egyptian government. And uh, I need to mention that uh, this end-to-end -end, uh, project with the health insurance part, including providers, regulatory authority, including the ERPs, payment gateways, and identification methodologies, is one of the most complex across the world, not only in Egypt, by the way. Uh, we checked uh, differently across the world systems that is connecting the Egyptian population or the, the population itself on one platform, uh, this is one of the, of the unique parts uh, across the world. Uh, and it's a very good initiative by the Egyptian. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, if you allow me, uh, I'll give you a follow-up question uh, posed by uh, Rehem al who did not identify her affiliation, but she's asking uh, uh, two questions. Uh, if you can take the first one, which is what is the minimum requirement for internet speed to support uh, telehealth? And then she has a second question, which is how will the universal health insurance system uh, cater to the various uh, private sector profit rates? And I'll give that question to Dr. Walid if he's, if he's interested to take a, a go at it. So first question, Dr. Oh. please go ahead. For the first part, definitely this needs a technical person to reply. I'm not the technical person to reply on the speed and the bandwidth to, to adopt. But I believe that uh, the smart thing you do in technology, usually when you build it, that you build it to, to work with the minimal bandwidth available in the commercial market. And this is should be uh, the mindset in the IT people, but I'm not the IT person to comment. Maybe Dr. Well can mention something related to this, but in general, uh, uh, it, it needs a technical person and it depends also on the type of the service that is uh, requested. So maybe Dr. Well can comment, please. please yeah, do. I, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, it's difficult to pinpoint because there are different uh, uh, utilities, different things you will do in telemedicine. One of them is uh, video conferencing. One of them is moving big uh, data like uh, X-rays and MRIs and CTs like Moaz does and uh, their encryption. There is uh, all sorts of stuff and uh, other things are just simpler uh, things. But my issue is you need to know the quality of service. This is the problem is you really don't know. Uh, and we had we, we, we have experience I know Vodafone had an experience in Siwa a long time ago as well. And so uh, if we know the quality of service per location, uh, and I agree with him also that when you build the system, you need to make it work with all the new technologies on the minimal possible bandwidth, but you still, in healthcare, healthcare is unforgiving. So if you miss a beat, you lose a patient. And uh, this is unforgiving. So when you're setting up, it's very serious, particularly that we may be talking about urgent care, emergency care. All of this can lend itself to telemedicine and telehealth because emergency, for instance, any one of us can be subjected to an accident anywhere in the, in the country with no real high-end facility to manage him. But with telehealth, any facility can at least stabilize the patient until moving to, uh, so we'll be giving directions real time, 24 seven to a place to, and this is only one of the examples. So if, you, if we at least get the minimal quality of service sorted out, uh, 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 that would be good. 
The higher bandwidth, of course, is, is very good. But as the telecom industry increases the bandwidth, you have bad, the other uh, el, uh, Facebooks and Musalsalat uh, will video. It always gets uh, the traffic gets in the way as well. So it's a it's a balance. I understand it's a challenge, but we they need to do a better job. This doesn't mean that in the states, for the U.S., uh, things are extremely fancy. Yes, in metropolitan areas, like Manhattan, Washington D.C., it's fantastic. But then, if you get to telemedicine again to rural areas, it's the same challenge. You still don't have the bandwidth uh, that you need in rural areas. Uh, uh, it, it needs to uh, be sorted out. Maybe it's a good thing that telemedicine is impacting now, and we can talk to the industry and see how we can uh, improve things, whether through uh, Wi-Fi or through landlines or whatever it is they see in the technology. But uh, there is no precise figure uh, of bandwidth uh, that you need. The more, the better, uh, depending on the technology and what you really want to do. Uh, I hope that this makes a little bit uh, yeah, little sense. Thank you, Dr. Well, for stepping in and saving uh, Moaz from having this question also. Uh, Dr. Walid, please go ahead. Okay. Yeah, my, uh, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> Mohammed Bey, can I ask you to kindly repeat the question because I checked on the Q&A box and I, I could not read uh, Riham's question. So if you could kindly repeat it for me, that would be very kind sure. of you. Uh, Mohammed. Yes, my pleasure. Uh, Mohammed. Uh, if you allow me, Anani Ged, uh, if you allow me just a point of clarification, uh, the, the person posing the question, Rehamed Dissoui, is the chief strategy officer of the sovereign fund of Egypt. And she sits on the board of the sub fund for healthcare and pharmaceutical industry. So I know she is focused uh, on this subject. And her question is part of the strategy that we are reviewing on a constant basis. Over to you. Thank you for the clarification. And um, her question was, how will the universal health insurance system cater to the various private sector profit rates? Uh, well, uh, I think, and maybe here, of course, we would like to get, I think, an input from Hossein Bessade, but so if I were to speak on the private sector, I think the impact uh, actually is clear and direct when it comes to the private medical service providers. Here, it, it, it's quite obvious, it's quite clear, there is a higher demand, and this is why we are all seeing a, a higher appetite from various investors whether they are national investors or regional or international investors coming to invest in the healthcare service provision in Egypt. And, and that is a market that is growing very fast and will continue to grow and expand over the coming years and decades. Uh, if we were to look at the impact on the um, private insurance sector, uh, here the question is, and maybe it would be an interesting point to get Hossam uh, uh, feedback on Hossam Bey, because we are having here a person who actually comes from the private insurance industry and is now leading the universal health insurance implementation at an executive level. Honestly, as, uh, at least as far as I can see, we are not yet in the private medical insurance seeing clearly, apart from the supplementary insurances, apart from whatever gaps may be on the universal health insurance benefit details, we are not really seeing uh, any wider scope for the private insurance sector to contribute as an insurer. Uh, and I'm not sure if this is something that is under any kind of review or not, and maybe getting an input here from Hossam Bey could be helpful. Sure, thank you, Dr. Halid, uh, for the question. Um, uh, let me take the first one, which is related to the profitability of the private sector as, uh, as uh, health, in health providers. Um, uh, the old legacy that uh, the government is uh, buying the service with the cheapest price is uh, the cheapest price and the, ch the, the, 
the least quality is now, uh, it's not there anymore. Uh, we now have uh, um, a pricing committee. This pricing committee consists of different members coming from both government and private sector, as well as uh, uh, non-government organizations and uh, funding uh, organizations uh, such as WHO and the World Bank. So uh, we are working together on a fair price for the service. And actually the pricing uh, criteria and the pricing methodologies that are put uh, to uh, identify a price of a service is, is quite uh, challenging. Um, as we all know, uh, this is a legacy in the market, even in the private sector, that is like a rule of a thumb concerning uh, uh, the pricing of any medical service that you are getting, especially on the tertiary level. Uh, if you are talking about drugs and medications, this is already regulated from the government with, uh, uh, with uh, uh, obligated prices for it. However, if you are talking about uh, tertiary services and uh, uh, secondary uh, services, they are not uh, uh, price regulated. And I believe that uh, in the future and near future, uh, uh, the pricing uh, that uh, the UHIA will provide to the market will be a, a real benchmark for the market. And we are working on it. Uh, um, uh, we are. We have different uh, aspects for the for the costing. We are working on the costing of each and every intervention that will be provided under the benefit package of the UHIA. And we are putting uh, in the cost items uh, all kind related to uh, to uh, uh, renovating uh, the equipments, uh, the maintenance of the equipments, and uh, the new technology coming in the future. Uh, as well as the profit margin of the organization. So, uh, so all these are the items, and uh, we are taking it, uh, taking them into the consideration while we are building uh, uh, the price of a service. And I believe this will be uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, sound good for investment. Uh, we have already ma made uh, lots of, uh, of meetings with uh, private sector investors, and they came and sit with us and they saw the criteria that we are working with and actually I saw in their uh, their eyes some enthusiasm regarding uh, what is happening currently in terms of buying the service. Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, the second talk, which is a little bit challenging because the law itself uh, did not uh, clarify the role of uh, the insurance uh, companies uh, in the new uh, health insurance system which is actually, I see it uh, a little bit uh, um, uh, uh, not good uh, to have something like this, uh, not clear in the, in the law or its decree. Uh, we are working actually together with the, the private insurance companies and even the public insurance companies, as well as the, um, the FRA and uh, all the members of them to start uh, constructing a clear uh, role of the medical uh, insurance uh, providers in Egypt. Uh, as you already know, uh, Dr. Walid, uh, the, ins the medical insurance uh, itself in Egypt is not regulated. They actually forgot it. Uh, if you know that there is already some new rule for, for medical insurance just recently in the last, uh, I think, year. However, for the last 30 years, there were no regulations for medical insurance, which is quite a challenge. Uh, there, there are uh, rules for life insurance and there are rules for uh, property and casualty insurance. But uh, somehow they forgot the medical insurance uh, uh, rules uh, in the past. Uh, and this is actually, I see, one of the why the, the, the role of the medical insurance uh, company was somehow not clear in the, in the law because they were actually uh, working with other uh, authorities and government and looking into uh, the laws available in every uh, uh, government entity in the market. If you look as well, we have something called HMO, which doesn't have any kind of regulations in the market. We have something called TPAs, which also have no regulations in the market. So I, I believe we have to work together uh, to start building first regulations for, su for such industries and then afterwards uh, uh, start putting a framework, a clear framework and uh, of how we can uh, uh, 
uh, somehow synergize with insurance bodies uh, to support the new HIA system in the future from an insurance perspective, not from uh, a management and administration of network perspective. And this is, this is uh, as you already know, Dr. Walid, very important uh, uh, for an insurance body. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for, your, for your very comprehensive uh, uh, answer. Um, last question will take it because I think we're running out of time. Uh, I'm sorry, can, can I make a very quick comment? Can I Please. make a very quick comment? Muhammad Bey, uh, Hussein Bey, Taban, thank you very much. And uh, all what you have said is absolutely correct. Uh, maybe an update for our audience uh, because um, uh, actually I am privileged to be on the advisory board of the uh, Financial Regulatory Authority uh, for the insurance sector. And uh, actually, as uh, Taban, I know Hussein Bey, you would know, but maybe some of the audience members do not know, we are expecting the issuance of the new unified insurance law, hopefully uh, in a couple of months. And uh, under that new law, actually, all the sectors operating in the medical insurance area, whether they are TPO, uh, TPAs or the existing HMOs or others are going to be perfectly and fully regulated. So you would hope that along with the regulation of this sector, maybe a, a more advanced dialogue can happen uh, with the Universal Health Insurance Authority and the different stakeholders at a national scale, because hopefully it's going to be regulated soon. So maybe this will put us all in a better position. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Walid. Um, just want to refer to a comment by uh, Mr. Hisham at Dinana we're basically saying that we have a very complex set of stakeholders that we need to change their culture and mindset for digital health. Now, our last question for today uh, comes again from uh, Rola Kopeni, our senior consultant at Lynx and assistant professor at New Giza University. And this is directed to uh, uh, Mr. Hossam Sadr. The question is that the, government's, the governance structure of the universal healthcare was made to guarantee the independence of each entity. Uh, nevertheless, does this independence pose non-alignment across the different bodies? And if yes, in which way? Thank you, Hamad, again. Uh, I believe uh, the, the new law, uh, they, uh, they actually um, take off the, uh, this kind of vagueness and gray areas between uh, responsibilities in the government. Uh, actually separating the three bodies uh, in three uh, separate entities, uh, and I don't concern, uh, con uh, I do not consider uh, the, the general authority for healthcare um, as a regulation body because it's uh, at the end uh, the main arm of service providing. However, uh, uh, taking out the, um, the accreditation body and the financial and the insurance body out of the system and be independent, this was, uh, was actually very important. Uh, concerning the alignment, we definitely have uh, the all the alliance. We have a small committee uh, that is already led by Dr. By Dr. Ahmed Al Subki, uh, uh, the prime, uh, the health prime minister, the, the health minister uh, uh, deputy, uh, and this uh, this uh, this committee is actually aligning all kind of initiatives that we are taking or actions that are need to be done either on the digital side or on the operational side. Uh, and uh, this committee is, uh, is its responsibility and it's actually will continue until uh, 2030 and until we finish the, the project. Uh, uh, its uh, responsibility is to align uh, between the three bodies that were created uh, through the, the, the law number two of the year 2018. However, for the other uh, bodies uh, and service providers uh, in the market, definitely they will be somehow uh, uh, contacting and dealing with either UHIA or the HAR, which is the accreditation body. And for both of us, we have uh, actually um, uh, a joint uh, committee as well. And we, uh, we meet, uh, I can say, on a weekly basis uh, to align together uh, regarding whomever as a service provider wants to join the network uh, providing services to Egyptians. We work together on... Uh, on actually initiatives to make uh, awareness for uh, service providers in the uh, in the market and uh, and answer most of uh, the questions uh, 
uh, raised here uh, during the meeting. Uh, so I think uh, there is no challenge, I can say, in terms of alignment uh, and the new law uh, um, separating uh, the service providing uh, from uh, the accreditation and from the financing uh, and the management of the system was the, this is the cornerstone in, in, the, uh, in the law itself. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Mr. Hussein and our distinguished uh, panelists. Uh, I think we've wrapped up our, our time and our discussion for today. Um, extremely grateful for your thoughts and, and, and suggestions. And, uh, and I'll give it over to uh, Mr. Niged Desharaoui if he wants to say a final word. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as you can see, I, I was following with great interest. Truly, I wish we had more time to give more time to our experts. It was really a very, very rich and substantial uh, webinar. Let's use this phrase. Uh, I hope we can have many, many more. Uh, if I can just say two comments. Uh, to all our panelists and all our attendees who I thank because the questions we received, I was following some of the questions that were posed uh, and this is the reflection of the interest uh, in the subject matter and in the uh, substance of uh, our distinguished speakers. Uh, and I, I also thank all the speakers for giving us their time and they're sharing their expertise and uh, knowledge. And I hope that we all together uh, will uh, get together, uh, hopefully soon, maybe in a year's time, where we can discuss the rollout and actual implementation and the success uh, of the impact of digitalization in the ecosystem of, uh, for healthcare, especially especially for the universal uh, healthcare system of Egypt. Thank you so much for your time and we're glad to have you with us and we look forward to seeing you all very soon. Enjoy yourself. Thank you so much. Bye. Our Thank pleasure. You. Bye. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you very Thank much. You so much Bye. For moderating. Thank comments. you. Thank you, Muhammad, for your help in moderation, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you all.